<clears throat> the objectives are in your Kindle. So please take a look at all the objectives. We're going to define, discuss, and we are going to talk about the recommendations for nutrition. So you are what you eat. Is it true? It is true because food is used to build and repair the body. Food choices must therefore be based on sound information and knowledge. Malnutrition during crucial periods may result in physical or mental disabilities. Well-nourished persons are usually better able to heal and ward off infections than are poorly nourished individuals. So good nutrition is very critical in pregnant women, young children, and the elderly. And even more so now with everything that is going on. The study of nutrition includes all the processes involved in the selection, intake, and utilization of nutrients. And nutrients are the components in food that supply the elements necessary to meet the body's requirement for energy, growth, maintenance, and well-being. So foods are used to meet the body's needs. Now, your role as a dental assistant, you'll be discussing nutrition and food choices with patients in a variety of circumstances. So you might have thought, why do I need to know this? But in some cases, we need to speak to our patients about it. Counseling patients about the prevention of tooth decay. So that's part of nutrition. If someone is having a lot of sugar, we need to speak to them about that because they have tons of cavities. Counseling patients regarding their diet, following oral surgery or other dental procedures. So that's why it's important when I say what's the post-op for a procedure? Because, for example, an extraction, the post-op is soft diet, anything soft, okay? Performing dietary analysis with patient, counseling patients who have orthodontic appliances on their teeth with regard to food choices. So when somebody has braces on also, we have to make sure they, uh, and even the orthodontist, uh, assistant should be letting them know. But when we come to the when they come to the office and we see broken brackets or food stuck in their teeth or their braces, we need to counsel them on that. So here's a dental assistant showing a child. And sometimes, yes, we have books. I don't know if we still have them out now with COVID. Everything pretty much has been put away from magazine to book, so nobody's touching it. Uh, but sometimes we can go over it and have it in the room and then uh, spray it down or have them wear gloves in order to see it. Now, there's a Healthy People 2020 report. It was issued by the U.S. Department of Human and Health Services. The Health People 2020 has a renewed focus on identifying, measuring, tracking, and reducing health disparities through a de detriment of health approach. So... In other words, they're trying to let you know what's good and what's not and how to, um, uh, what are their recommendations basically. So the recommended dietary allowances, the RDAs, are the levels of essential nutrients needed by individuals on a daily basis. The DRIs, dietary reference intakes, provide information about tolerable upper intake levels and recommended intake by age group. Both are determined by the Food and Nutrition Board of the National Academy of Sciences. So the U.S. Department of Agriculture, they issue a dietary guidelines that it's important in helping to find ways to reduce rates of death and disease related to obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and other chronic illnesses. So there's something called my plate. It was replaced uh, it replaced the My Pyramid. So back in my days, I had My Pyramid. It looked like a pyramid. And it was the USDA's familiar guide to primary food groups. It was a visual cue to help consumers adopt healthy eating habits. And it emphasizes the fruit, vegetable, grains, protein, and dietary food groups. Now, I don't know if they still show it in school, but they should. And it looks like this. So our plate, and you can go to choosemyplate.gov to even see, should contain fruits, grains, protein, vegetables, and dairy, okay? Those are basically the six key nutrients. Uh, the six key nutrients are carbohydrates, proteins, fats, water, vitamins, and minerals. And 
it also shows that everything is proportioned. OK, so moving on. Uh, Canada has a food guide also. I'm not going to go into Canada's stuff. Carbohydrates. So those are your simple sugars. Absorb first. Complex carbohydrates must be processed before they can be absorbed into the intestinal tract. And then you have your dietary fiber. It's in, indigestible and passes through the intestinal tract unchanged. So your carbohydrates are the body's chief source of energy. Um, once you have some carbohydrates, you get a little bit of energy. But at the same time, if you don't have any, your energy drops. Simple sugars are absorbed first, and they are found in processed foods. Your complex carbohydrates, those are your starches. They're mainly found in grains and need to be processed before they can be absorbed. And your dietary fiber is indigestible. It is commonly called roughage. That's your like greens, your lettuce, um, kale, things like that. Now, sources of carbohydrates, cereal grains, wheat, corn, oat, rice, barley, and buckwheat. Your sweets are like your table sugar, honey, maple, corn syrups. And your vegetables are your green leafy vegetables, your dry beans, and your peas. So, the foods that cause tooth decay. So, we talked about this a little bit before in uh, Chapter 13 about dental caries. Karyogenic, any food that contains sugar or other carbohydrates that can be metabolized by bacteria into plaque. Uh, refined carbohydrates such as your candy, sweets, uh, they are karyogenic because they are, their sugars are readily available. And a major factor in the karyogenicity of a carbohydrate is how long the food stays in the mouth. So I'll give you an example. Um, liquid sugars like your sodas. If you're sipping on sodas all day long, it is not good because the sugar is constantly washing on your teeth. It's better if you want a soda that you drink it all in one shot and then afterwards rinse your mouth out even if it's with plain water so that the sugar is not sitting with your saliva, okay? Especially for those that are more cavity prone. Uh, let's see. Foods, more foods that cause tooth decay. Again, I just mentioned the soft drinks. Uh, sticky foods such as raisins and caramels. Uh, those get in your pits and fissures and they also cause caries. Your crackers, believe it or not, because when they get wet and moist, they also stick onto the teeth and they remain in the mouth long enough, uh, long enough to be broken down into sugars. And then Another important factor in karyogenicity is whether the food stimulates the flow of saliva. So what's the purpose of salivary flow? It speeds clearance of food from the mouth. So if you eat something that might dry up your mouth, it's not going to speed up uh, getting that stuff out of your mouth. That's why, again, if, if you feel like your mouth is dry, rinse out your mouth with some water and get that food out, if you, especially if you don't have time to brush at that point, okay? You can always find some water and rinse your mouth in the bathroom. Proteins composed of amino acids, only nutrients that can build and repair body tissue. There are 20 amino acids. Eight are essential in the adult for normal growth and maintenance of tissues. These eight essential amino acids must come from food. A complex protein is one that contains a well-balanced mixture of all eight essential amino acids. So your proteins, they provide structure, they regulate body processes and provide the body with energy. They are, there are three classifications of proteins. They are called complete, partially complete, and incomplete. So your complete proteins, those are your meat, your fish, poultry, eggs, and dairy. Your partially are grains and vegetables, and your incomplete are your corn and gelatin. So your complete proteins, they're a well-balanced mix of all essential amino acids, or eight of them. Partially, they uh, partially complete are an unbalanced mix of the eight, and incomplete, they basically, those proteins support neither life nor normal gro growth. They cannot be used as a sole source of protein. 
Your fat, they're also known as lipids. They're an important source of energy. They provide essential fatty acids. They transport vitamins, provide heat insulation. They're components of cell membranes and myelin, the covering of your nerve fibers. And they form protective cushions around the uh, organs. Now, consuming excessive amounts of fat is discouraged. You basically, in an average American, want to have 40% of calories come from fat. Now, cholesterol is a fat commonly found in saturated fats from animal sources. The fat is divided into two categories. You have your HDL and LDL, high density or low density. So your high is a good fat, the low is a bad fat. Uh, cholesterol should be limited to less than 250 milligrams per day. Antioxidants, uh, vitamins E and C and beta carotene can prevent cholesterol from oxidizing and damaging arteries. You have many fruits, vegetables, and certain seasonings containing naturally occurring antioxidants. So here's some of your sources of vitamin E, soybeans, almonds, oatmeal, chickpeas, wheat germs, and sunflower seeds. Vitamin C, you find them in your peppers, oranges, strawberries, tangerines, broccoli, lemon, raspberry, cabbage, grapefruit, and black currant. Your beta carotene, those are your carrots, your sweet potatoes, your pumpkin, your kale, your winter squash, spinach, cantaloupe, and apricots. Now, seasonings that contain these antioxidants are your nutmegs, thyme, rosemary, sesame, cloves, green tea, and pepper. So if you use any of them, you're getting some antioxidants in you. Now your vitamins, organic substances that occur in plant and animal tissues, essential in minute amounts for the human body to maintain growth and good health. Do not supply energy, but needed to release energy from carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. To date, 13 vitamins have been discovered. Four are fat soluble, nine are water soluble. So your vitamins A, D, E, and K are fat soluble. Water soluble include the B complex and C. And if you look in your Kindle, there is a table 16.4 where you're gonna find uh, your best sources, primary functions, more information all about vitamins. Take a look at it. Now your minerals, inorganic substances that make up about 4% of the body's weight. 14 essential minerals. Minerals present, uh, present in the largest quantities are sodium, potassium, calcium, chlorine, phosphorus, and magnesium. Then you have your trace elements, and they include iron, zinc, copper, selenium, chromium, manganese, iodine, and fluorine. Now, minerals are needed by the body in small amounts to maintain health and function. Minerals are supplied by diet alone, and they're also components of the bones and teeth. They make bones and teeth rigid and strong. And again, there's another table in your Kindle about minerals. Please take a look at that. Your water. Approximately two-thirds of the body's weight is water. It's often called the forgotten nutrient. Water helps in building tissue, regulating body temperature, lubricating joints and mucous membranes. Adults should consume at least 64 ounces of water each day. Human beings can survive for longer without food than they can without water. Water can come from some food, such as your fruits and vegetables contain 80% water, meat contains 40%, to about 60 percent. Any questions before I move on? All right, I'm going to take that as a no. So diet modification provided by members of the dental team is usually focused on dental health and is not intended to replace the services of a registered dietitian. The patient's lifestyle and background must be considered when one is making recommendations if your dietary recommendations are compatible with the patient's normal diet, the patient is more likely to comply. Di dietary analysis can be used to help a patient understand the role of nutrition in his or her dental and general health. 
Patient must keep a diet diary for about three days. Patient must record every food eaten, including the amount, how the food was prepared, and when it was eaten. Dental team then reviews the completed diary with the patient using a dietary analysis form, and it looks like this. I mean, basically, you don't even have to have the form. You can have a piece of paper and make it yourself with these, you know, time, place, food eating, amount eating, and how it was prepared. Now, reading food labels. Every food label must contain the following information. Individual serving size, number of servings per container. Total calories, calories derived from fat content and percentage of daily value, uh, which is called your RDA. Now, here is an example of a nutrition facts label. Please look at it because it's important. A lot of people don't realize, like when you buy something, the serving size should be one cup. But if you look, the serving size is meant for two people. For example, say this was on a can of soup and you wanted to eat the whole soup, a can of soup, but you were uh, restricting your diet. So they're letting you know on this nutrition fact that this can can basically uh, serve two people. So if you eat the whole can, then you have to basically uh, double everything. So for one cup is 250. If you had the whole thing, it would be 500. And your calories from fat was 110. But if you had the whole thing, it would be 220. And so on and so forth. Everything would be double. So you got to be careful. And that's why it's important to read the nutrition facts. Some people, when they eat cookies, they eat a whole sleeve. And they're like, oh, but it said uh, the cookies is only 110 calories. But if you read up here, they might say two cookies is 110, not the whole sleeve. So again, it's super important to start reading nutrition facts labels. And what does the percent daily value mean? It tells you if the nutrients you consume are contributing to the recommended daily amounts. Now, Product label information. You always want to begin with the serving size. That was back here, okay? The serving size, I just mentioned it in green. All right. It is uniform across product lines so that you can easily compare similar foods. The amount of each nutrient in the, in the food is expressed in two ways, a percentage of the RDA and by weight of the serving size. By using the percentage of daily values, you can easily determine whether food contributes to the large or small amount of a particular nutrient. Almost all foods are required to have the ingredients listed on the package. Ingredients are listed in descending order of weight to indicate the proportion of any ingredient and artificial, artificial coloring must also be named in the list of ingredients. So it can be surprising to read the ingredients. Some products listed as fruit juice actually contain 5% or so of actual fruit juice if you read the fine print. So very deceiving sometimes, but again, it is there. So you can't say that you didn't know. You have to read the label. Now, examples of nutrient claims include low fat, high fiber, reduced calories, and cholesterol free. Nutrient claims can be confusing for consumers. For example, items that claim to be reduced fat must have at least 25% less fat than the regular items. Again, refer to uh, your Kindle um, box 16.3 to have uh, a more uh, discussion or explanation about the food label terminology. Organic foods. Foods with the organic label must have been grown without the use of any chemical pesticides, herbicides, or fertilizers. The use of hormones in seed preparation is prohibited. Organic milk must have no added vitamins or chemicals and preparation is closely monitored. Eating disorders. So influences of the media, food industry, and society have led to a preoccupation with being thin. Such influences have contributed to a society of weight conscious adolescents and adults and an increase in eating disorders. Eating disorders having serious medical, oral, and psychological implications that can be life-threatening. 
So eating disorders commonly occur during adolescence and adulthood and include anorexia nervosa, bulimia, binge eating, compulsive overeating, female athlete triad, and chronic dieting syndrome. Most of those who suffer from eating disorders are about 14 to 25 years old, white and affluent. Occurrence of eating disorders is more common in females. The ratio of females to males is 10 to 1. Again, refer to your uh, table 16.6. .6. It's going to show you the different components of eating disorders and treatment recommendations. So super important to know. Real quick, we'll go over these, but again, uh, please read and look at the table in your Kindle. Uh, bulimia often referred to as binging and purging disorder. Anorexia nervosa characterized by self-starvation. So binging involves eating large amounts of food, uh, as many as 5,000 calories in a short period. And a person with bulimia often finds comfort in food. Purging is vomiting follow, following a binge. The person feels guilty about the binge. The use of laxatives is another form of purging. Bulimics may have excessive wear of the lingual surfaces of the anterior teeth caused by the acid that is produced during vomiting. Anorexia nervosa can be deadly because the body is deprived of essential nutrients. Now, female athlete triad, this term refers to young female athletes with an eating disorder that includes restrictive dieting, overexercise, weight loss, and a lack of body fat. So it can result in osteoporosis, which is bone thinning, amenorrhea, which is menstrual, menstrual periods, enamel de decalcification of teeth, basically the enamel is not on the teeth, Increased caries, periodontal, and soft tissue inflammation. So management of eating disorders. Anorexia nervosa and bulimia are considered psychiatric diseases with serious medical, dental, and nutritional complications. Dental professionals are often the first healthcare providers to diagnose an eating disorder. Why? Because we're always looking in the mouth. So you know, if you go to a medical doctor and you don't say there's something wrong with your mouth, you say there's something wrong with your arm, they're going to look at your arm regardless. In addition to providing dental care and education, the dentist is obligated to assist the patient in obtaining psychotherapy and medical care. So again, how is that dental professional become aware of an eating disorder before other professionals do? Because a dental professional can spot the dental issues associated with eating disorders before other symptoms become obvious. So we can see it in the mouth first before the body. Therapy for such disorders can be lengthy and costly, and it also may require inpatient care. Members of the dental team must always be empathetic and understanding. So definitely we have to listen and um, give recommendations, and also get the patient to trust you. Management of eating disorders. Successful management of these disorders requires a team approach, including psychiatrists, psychologists, 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 physicians, nurses, dietitians, social workers, and dentists. The road to recovery is often long and expensive. So in addition to providing dental care and education, the dentist is obligated to assist the patient in obtaining psychotherapy and medical care. Okay, we can't really just, we know if there's a problem, we can't just say, okay, have a nice day, see you next time. Because normally what happens is when you bring up this uh, disease or disorder, when you bring up the disorder and the patient knows that you know, guess what? They don't usually come back because they're embarrassed. Um, or they go to another dentist for a second opinion, okay? So we really can just let the patient go without doing what's right. Now, eat healthy habits, eat right. Consume five servings of fruit and vegetables daily plus generous portions of grains, beans, and dairy products. Keep bones strong, include 
it, uh, sufficient calcium in your diet. Take a daily supplement for vitamin D, which helps your body absorb more calcium effectively. Protect the immune system. Eat whole grains, green leafy vegetables, seafood, lean meats, and moderate amounts of vegetables, oils to get vitamins E and B, C, and the trace minerals, zinc. Maintain body weight. Excess fat can hasten the onset of diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, and other problems. And exercise, combine aer uh, aerobic exercises such as walking and running with simple stretch training to strengthen your muscles. How often should adults participate in physical exercise? It is recommended that adults participate in 60 minutes of physical activity per day. And there are brochures on healthy habits that uh, a lot of offices have to use them as a good as educational tool to give to patients and to even use them with patients and explain everything with them. Does anybody have any questions? 